Praise the Lord. Yeah, we're excited about uh, what God is doing. We've been through, uh, as a church, kind of like we've been, we've come through a, a, a rough time, and it seems like we're coming on the other end of that now. So we're kind of excited about that. In my spirit, I feel God's releasing uh, some blessings in our in our ministry, in our individual lives. Uh, and I believe that's for you guys, too. It's not just for me or not for the board or anything like that, but I believe God's doing a great thing. Uh, part of that is just... Uh, Going through instead of just preaching a sermon week to week, but trying to preach a sermon series. So I'm going to be preaching over the next uh, six or seven weeks. Tina's going to teach next week. But uh, I don't know what I believe in. And sometimes as Christians, we get through this process where, what do I actually believe? I hear all this stuff from the world. I hear all this stuff from everybody else. What do I actually believe? Maybe I know what I should believe, but do I really believe it? We're going to talk about that today. And I'm not going to go, it's going to be a, probably a little uh, different than just preaching the uh, three-point, uh, Jesus died on the cross, rose from the dead, and, you know, coming back kind of thing. Most of us know, know that. Is that my phone? No, if you have a phone, please turn it off. Um, I used mine this morning, or silent it, or whatever. I was looking at mine today. I was, um, oh, yeah, thank you, honey. Here, hold that. So um, I like, um, I'm, I'm one of those guys that like Facebook, is that okay? And because uh, I connect with a lot of people, not only here locally, but people that we administer to over the years. And some of the kids that we administer to on our street ministry is now having babies and we get to celebrate with them when they're children. So I, I love it. And one of the guys that I uh, liked on Facebook was uh, Graham Cook. And uh, this past summer when I was going through a little uh, some trials and tribulations a little bit. Um, I read his, one of his books that really ministered to me uh, as a pastor and as a Christian. And so this is what he said this morning. This is why I was looking for it when we were singing this song. It says, we are not a people looking for the presence of God. I don't think this is a prophetic word. This is kind of a word for us today. We are not a people looking for the presence of God. We already have it. He is inside us. You can't get any more presence than that. I want the presence of God. I want the presence, right? I'm seeking you. I'm seeking you. What is it? Maybe it's uh, not just because he's already in us by his Holy Spirit. And we need to recognize his spirit is in us. When you said yes to Jesus. Now, now we've taught on this before. But remember when we said yes to Jesus. When you were born again. When you uh, turned away from your old life into your new life. And Jesus came in. The, by his spirit came inside you. So you know we sing that little song as children. Jesus is in our heart, right? What's it? What's the song? Um, hey, you'll get it. Um, but He's in us. He's in you. He, your spirit became alive and aware of the things of God, and that's why sometimes when you're doing things, the Spirit of God would say, "Uh, uh," or "Go ahead and do that," and you know it's the Spirit of God, the presence of God is in you. What it is, I think, that we have to do is we have to uh, make ourselves. Um, aware that God's presence is in us. We need to allow his, his spirit to speak to our spirit, to speak to our flesh, allow our, our obedience to the spirit of God to be in the presence of God. Amen? Because we, we do, now uh, this is not only what I'm preaching on today, but maybe this is good stuff anyway. But when, we, when, when the Holy Spirit tells us to do something inside, you know the Holy Spirit is talking to you. Come on, you know what I'm talking about, right? You know, most of us are believers today, so you know we know that Jesus is uh, through His Spirit speaks to us, and you know and maybe He'll tell you to love your wife better, or love your husband better, or you know you should forgive your neighbor. I mean, there's things that happen. The Spirit tells you, and it's constantly speaking to us. He's never quiet. He's just that small, still voice that wants to encourage you in your daily walk with Him, with God. But. The warning comes in this way, is that when we don't listen to the Holy Spirit, come on, mature Christians, listen to me. When we don't listen to the Holy Spirit in that moment, then the Bible says we're being disobedient. And if you research any of that in the scripture, you find out when we're disobedient to that, it's like the sin of witchcraft. Now, how many want witchcraft to be part of your, your DNA, you know? So, we, uh, sorry about that. Um, the... If our, we don't want that to be part of us. We want that to be, uh, you know, not even near us. So that means we should be obedient, mature Christians, to God by His Spirit continuously. Now don't look sad at me because I look at you guys. Y'all look guilty right now. Come on. Don't do that. 
Because the encouragement today is that we can listen to the Spirit of God, and we do have the presence of God in us, amen? And so as we mature in God, and that's Ephesians, that's the heart of my, uh, my ministry, our ministry here, is Ephesians 4, is that we mature in Christ, and that so we, we be effective in ministry. Come on, say amen. Amen. You know it. So what does that mean? Does everybody have a ministry? Yes. Does everybody have something they can do? Yes. So it's outside the realm of our work and our life outside Christ. We, you know, we have this life that we have to live. We have to, raise, we have to earn money. We have to pay the bills. We have all that stuff. But in that, we walk in God. And our priority is not of this world. Our priority is heavenly. So we, we look at things differently than the people in the world. We don't really have to have all the new stuff, right? We don't, I mean, if you do, you know, I'm sorry for you. But, you know, we don't need all the things. We, what we need is the presence and the awareness of the presence of God so we can be effective in ministry in everything we do. So that's, I, I kind of let the cat out of the bag, but that's where we're going in 2014. Is what ministry are you responsible for? And there's a lot listed in the Word of God. We'll talk about that at a later date. There's a lot listed of what we should be doing. But I think the key to that is from now till the end of the year is to uh, be more aware of the presence of God in our lives so we can listen to the still small voice of the Holy Spirit and do what He has asked us to do. Amen. I'll tell you, uh, so I'll tell him myself, uh, this week, um, I was driving to my house and was pulled in a subdivision, and there's a there's a um, a home uh, for disabled or elderly people just down the road from us, and I drove right past this guy that was struggling to get his wheelchair into over the uh, what's called the, the handicap ramp by the curb, you know what I'm talking about? And I thought well, I better stop and help him, but you know what? I, I didn't do it, and I drove to my house, and I felt so bad. You know what I'm saying? How many? Come on, I'm just telling them myself. I was in a rush to get to get to, to the house, and I should have just stopped my car, helped them up the little ramp, and maybe engage in a conversation, pray for them. I don't know what the Holy Spirit would have done, but I didn't listen. I had to ask God to forgive me, amen? And I know it's just a small thing. It's just a, a little thing, but it was a prompting by the Holy Spirit for me to do something, stop my day, stop my, my, where I, my agenda for a moment, and go do what the what God wanted me to do. And in, in a sense, I mean, it was, think about it, the, it. And here's another thing. You can write this down. The Spirit and Jesus and the Father are all one. Right? And the Spirit is only going to say what he hears from the Father. So when I was disobedient to the Holy Spirit, I was actually disobedient to Father God. Now, come on. Am I right or wrong? Right? Why am I telling you this today? Because it's important to know that we're going places in the Spirit, amen? We're going places in God. God wants us to know Him and desire Him and understand Him in a much greater way than we do at this very moment. Why? Because I believe that there's uh, a change coming in the atmosphere, amen? I believe there's something happening in the heavenly realms that we need to be ready for. Amen. I believe the, the persecution that you see all over the world for Christians uh, may just come to the United States of America. Amen. And we need to know who we believe in and nothing else and not compromise that in any way. Amen. We are challenged every day to do wrong things by the, by the, the enemy of God. He attacks us continuously. Amen. And we need to know who we believe in. We need to understand the power that's in us through God. Amen? It's not the power to walk around in guilt. It's the power to walk in confidence that I know who I believe in. Even if we're at death's door, I know who I believe in. And I just a transition to our series today. Um, it says, I don't know what I believe in. I want to talk about that. So today we're going to talk about the total trust theory. Totally trusting God. The total touch trust theory. And if you have your Bibles, would you open up to 2 Timothy? And I'm just going to read a short portion of this, but I'm going to give you some history behind uh, what I'm reading. We're going to start in 2 Timothy chapter 1, and we're going to start with verse 8. So as soon as you get there, just kind of look at me and let me know that you got the 
here, or I think uh, they might put that up on the screen too. Hallelujah. Are you excited? be ashamed to testify about our Lord or ashamed of me, his prisoner, but join with me in the suffering of, for the gospel. Boy, underline that in your Bible. Yeah. By the power of God who has saved us, called us to a holy life, not because of anything we have done, but because his, his own purpose and grace. This grace was given us in Christ Jesus before the found, beginning of, the, of time, but it has now been revealed through a, the appearing of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who has destroyed death. Can you say destroyed death? Destroyed and death. And has brought life and immorality to light through the gospel. And of this gospel, I am appointed a herald and an apostle and a teacher. That is why I am suffering as I am. Yet I am not ashamed because I know whom I believe. Say, I know in whom I believe. I know whom I believe. And I am convinced that he is able to guard what I have entrusted to him for that day. What you have heard from me, keep as the pattern of sound teaching with faith and love in Christ Jesus. Guard the good deposit that was entrusted to you. Guard it and help uh, with the help of the Holy Spirit who lives in you. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you today that you have allowed me the opportunity to proclaim your word in this, where this group of believers. Father God, I pray that you use these words, God, to uh, encourage us, to strengthen us, to get us ready for the battle as ahead. Lord, I thank you, God, that our faith will change because we know whom we believe in Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I want to give you a little history behind this scripture right here. This is first, uh, you know, uh, Paul wrote to Timothy a letter, the first uh, of First Timothy, and then he wrote the second letter. The second letter was interesting because when he wrote and penned the second letter, it was like somebody in prison, and actually he was in prison. At this second time, he was not given the liberty to leave prison or have a lot of people come in and minister to him like he did in the early, the first time he was arrested. This time he was arrested, he was uh, put between two guards. He was able to write, he was able to communicate, but he knew for certain that his destiny was death. Now read the scripture. Give me, give me that back. Now read the scripture and think about that. He's going to append this to Timothy. I mean, his son, he calls him his son. He says, you are my son. I want to write this letter to you. I want you to understand who you are. And if you read the first part of, of this chapter, you'll see that he says your, your grandmother and your mother believed it. So you, that same spirit is in them. is, is also in you. And he's, he's just encouraging him. And then he pens this in the beginning of chapter 1. In, in, their, in our Bible, it kind of breaks it down to the verses, right? But in the Greek, if you read chapter verses 8 through uh, the end there, it's really just one long sentence. And Paul was saying, this is a, one of the most important things I want you to understand. Just because I'm suffering, I know who I believe in. I know who I stand for. I know this Jesus from the beginning of time. He knew that this was going to happen. And he was encouraging Timothy. He says, listen, you walk as I walk. Do like I did. And when you need help, the Spirit of God that is deposited in you is going to help you do this thing. Amen. Hallelujah. That's the same thing for us today. We have to remember what we're here for. We are here to walk in the power of God. We're here to walk in His strength. Amen. We were going through some troubles and trials this summer, right? Where our whole family did. We were pretty, we are pretty, we were in a, we were in a pit. We were in a, we were in a hard place. 
But you know what? The only thing I could hang on to during that whole process that we we're going through is I know God brings us through things and teaches us stuff. So I, I'm aware of that. I said, okay, we're going to make it through this. We're going to be on this other side and be, be strengthened. But as we're going through it, I tell you, it was a tough thing. I could hold on to one thing. I know who I believe in. I knew that Jesus Christ was the Son of God. I knew he loved me unconditionally. Amen? I knew that he's going to guide us through this process. And he did. And he will do for you too. Amen? And he will continue to do. Every time you go through a problem or trial or tribulation, he is there with you. And you just have to recognize who he is. And acknowledge that through this problem, I cannot handle it myself. I need his help. And I tell you, when I do, when I take my knowledge and set it aside on how to handle it, I like to fix things. I like to, get, I like to see the process through. I want to get it done. Amen. And the Lord kind of slowed me down and said, listen, son, you can't fix this. That's what he told me. This is not about you. You go through this so I can take you through so your faith will be increased. Amen. So I can trust God unconditionally for whatever goes, comes next. Because they're going to come, right? Come on. Yes. Be excited. It's okay to go through issues and problems. Because he never told us we weren't going to. As long as we're in this world, we're on this earth, and sin entered when Adam and Eve sinned, so we have to deal with that on a constant basis. And as we do, and we recognize our faults, then the Lord will give us forgiveness like that as soon as we ask and take us through that process. If we sin. Sometimes you go through things and you didn't sin. Right? You're just going through stuff. Doesn't mean you did anything wrong. It's just God's taking you through another trial and a tribulation, testing your faith so you can be strong, right, for His glory. Or do we get, a, you know, or we, or we can get into those uh, uh, sulking times, those pity parties, those times where we just try to handle things ourselves and it just doesn't work out. Come on, how many's been there? Okay, three of us admit it. So, but that's, the rest of us know it's true. Amen. We go through stuff and then we try to handle it ourselves. Amen. And then I just want to tell you this, that the gospel that we preach today is the same gospel that works in every corner of the world. Amen? Now think about this. Those guys in the Philippines right now, they lost everything. Some of them lost family members. Amen? You pray for them if you can. Give if you can to that. To any organization that will help. Convoy Hope, if you will. I just love this. They've already had, you know, and it's interesting. Let me tell you a little thing about Convoy Help. Help. When Haiti, when the, when the earthquake hit Haiti, the, the week before the earthquake hit, Conway Hope had just filled up all their warehouses with food and had enough food to, 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 to feed all those villages around that, that earthquake. It was an amazing miracle that God did. And guess what? Before this, this, hurt, this uh, tsunami, or not tsunami, but uh, typhoon hit the Philippines, Conway Hope had already filled up all their warehouses. Right, and they're sending uh, cargoes uh, full of food and clothing and blankets and, and generators and all that stuff that they need. It's just amazing the thing that, but it's just one organization that's helping, amen, to, to help those poor people there. But the same God that, that you love today is the same God that loves the Filipino people. And they're sitting there crying out today, don't have no home, all their, every, some of those places, like the, their houses, some of their houses are standing, but all the contents of their house was just blown out of the house. And they showed that on the news the other day. Those are the same people that cry out to God and the same God that loves them and cares for them. Amen. So, you know, you're not struggling like they are. So let's just realize, I mean, they're crying out to God at the present. And they talk about, well, I thank my God. They have nothing. Their child and their, their wife was there by thanking God for protecting them. Hallelujah. We don't suffer like that. But the same gospel that you serve, the same spirit that's in you, the same spirit is in them. And know that they're crying out to God. You can cry out to God too for your situation. Don't take your knowledge. The thing we suffer with the most is that we try to have our knowledge to figure out situations. And we don't rely on God. Do you have to lose everything like they did to rely on God? Think about that. No, I hope you don't. I hope you don't. I hope you can trust God now and rely on Him now and not rely on your own knowledge. See, I was thinking about um, when I first became a Christian. Man, I knew everything. I believed on everything, right? I had so much knowledge. I mean, I, I was like, you know, I just knew everything. I talked to people. I, wrote, I learned um, 
going through Bible studies, you know, studying the Word of God. I thought I, you know, I had all this knowledge, and and man, I, I witnessed the people, I shared God with them. They'd ask me questions, that you got to believe in Jesus. I didn't even have an answer for anything but Jesus. That was my only answer. And religion has done that to us. It's given us a system. It's given us a. a, a, a Oh, the metrics on how to do certain things, amen? But God is not that way. He, he wants to go past our religion or past what we think is right. You know, put, uh, I try not to, and I was talking to some people this, uh, uh, the other day, you know, sometimes our religion puts God in a, in a box where he has to work a certain way or he doesn't do certain things. Right, I remember a friend of mine said he didn't believe in healing. He thought healing wasn't for today. I said, healing is not for today. Why? Because that was for the beginning of the, the, the gifts of the Spirit were given in the beginning of the church. And so the church could have those things so the gospel would be spread throughout Jerusalem. I said, yes. And it's still spreading today, isn't it? Yes. But that my, my son thinking. But he had already, because of his learning and because of his religion, he decided that God can only work a certain way. I said, well, then what about Maria that God healed her, her cancer? How does that work? One day she's supposed to go in for surgery, the next day it's gone. I mean, that wasn't, that was God. It wasn't something we did here, but it happened, right? What happened when God healed people? I mean, is that, is it just like a freak thing or, or it's just their mind, come on, the world now, they, they, their mind caused them to be healed, their inner, their inner self, their inner power could do that. And I said, no, I don't think so. I believe God healed them. Why? So he could be glorified on earth. He's still doing that today, amen? So sometimes our religion, I remember t uh, learning the Romans Road. Have you ever heard of that, the Romans Road? You go to the book of Romans, all have sinned and fell short of the glory of God. Do you believe that? Yes. You want to accept Jesus, Romans 10, 9, and 10, right? If you confess with your mouth and you believe in your heart, the truth of this scripture, Jesus was raised from dead. That's all I knew. So that's what I tell people. Everybody's sin. You, God can forgive you your sins. If you pray this prayer, you're saved. Amen. But it's much deeper than that. After all these years, I've learned God loves you. His compassion flows from, him, from the throne room of God. And he draws people by his spirit in a gentle way to know the deep things of God. Amen? He doesn't hide anything from us. God doesn't hide anything. It's cool. Okay, cool. What do you want to know? Ask the Lord. He'll tell you everything. Amen? Well, I'm so far off my notes now. It's, uh, it's kind of crazy. But that's okay. God loves you and he cares about you. Amen? I was going to say this sermon is more of a, a proposition than a confession. And as we talk about, I don't know what I believe in. You know, as you grow in God, He continues to, to strengthen you and, and reveal things to you. Paul, let's look at Paul's life for a minute. Before he penned this, this, these words, Timothy. Think about Paul. On the road to Damascus. Now, Paul. Say, Paul, y'all. Paul, y'all. <laughs> Paul was going around arresting Christians, throwing them into prison, executing them. And on his road to, on the road to Damascus, with a letter from the Sanhedrin saying he'd go do this, with the power and authority of the leaders at that time, was going to Damascus to go arrest some more Christians. And he had an encounter with God. Amazing counter with God. And it changed his life. Go into the city. There's a man going to come. He's going to pray for you. And the scales on your eyes are going to fall off. And it says then instantly he was filled with the Holy Spirit. And he began to have power. And when the Spirit of God came in Paul, right? Now he was murdering Christians. And now he's preaching the gospel. I mean, just a week later. He's going confessing that this Jesus is real. The one he was persecuting people for believing. He can change your life. Think about Paul. He went to heaven. The first heaven or the second or the third. I don't know. But he was in heaven. He said he, when he was there, he saw stuff he couldn't even tell us about. <clears throat> hmm. Paul, you all right? Paul had such a marvelous. Think about this. He got shipwrecked. Stranded on an isle, bit by the snake, and the whole island got saved. Because of the snake that bit him was so deadly that you wouldn't survive even a, a couple of minutes. And he survived, and it was a witness at the whole island. And from the leadership on down, they all gave their life to the Lord, Jesus Christ. Amen. Paul. 
Paul had a message that this Jesus is real. Amen. Paul in argued in the book of Romans the difference between religion and a relationship with Jesus. That was Paul. Paul Penn, I listen, if you don't have any part of the Bible, you have Paul's writings, you will be saved and you will be on fire for God. Amen. Understand the authority that you have in Christ Jesus. Paul was an amazing man of God. Paul said, you have to. Or Paul said, I know whom I believe. See, I want a church that just doesn't have a religious activity. I want a church that knows who Christ is. Amen? I want a church that is on fire because they have a relationship with this Jesus who died for you and suffered for you and rose from the dead. It's more than just that. It's more than just kneeling down and giving your life to him. It goes deeper than that. He wants to be involved intimately in every part of your relationship, every part of your daily life, every part of who you are. Jesus. Say that name, Jesus. Jesus. See, it's not a Sunday morning thing. I mean, even though I like you guys coming on Sunday, don't get me wrong. I love doing this. But Jesus is there every part of your day. You know, the Lord gave me um, a year, a little, just a little over a year ago, the Lord gave me a word about John chapter 17. And you've heard me say it many times. And a lot of Christians say, that's the, that's the prayer that Jesus really prayed. We know about Matthew when he taught us how to pray, the disciples how to pray. But Jesus' Jesus's prayer is John 17. If you get a chance to read that to this afternoon, please. I say this often, but please read that again. But Jesus was praying for us that we would be one with God, the Son, and the Spirit. Just like they are one. He wants us to be one with them. So, and I prayed this morning before I came up here. I, I was praying this. I said, Father, let me be one with the Spirit and your Son and you. Let me not come up here and, and preach something that's not what you don't want. I want to share with the group. I want to share what you want and not what I want. And this is what I believe God wants to do in our Christianity. We have to go just like a, a little deeper, if I can say it that way. I don't like to say that. I don't want to get religious on you. I just want to take our knowledge of life and our knowledge of Him and make sure we really know Him as a person. Oh, I read my Bible every day, Pastor, and I, I said, that's great. Do you commune with Him? Do you spend time getting to know Him? No, because I'm really busy. And all of us can say that. It's hard. But he wants to know you. And I desire to know him. And it's, not, it's something that, I don't know how you, when you're growing with God and you're seeking after the Lord or you're searching scriptures, but it always brings me back to that time when I first believed and had that hunger just to want to read the word and know. I didn't know anything. I witnessed to everything. Every person in my, my, my uh, housing area we lived in, every person at work, my bosses, you know, if they had some of the rules they have today, I would have been in prison for preaching the gospel at work in the military. You know, it's crazy what they're doing right now. Pray for our, our military people uh, that they can be Christians openly like I was. I mean, I, nobody, everybody knew who I was. And he, when they come to my office for counseling, I would say, do you want a military answer or do you want a God answer? And you know, 99%, I'm serious, I have my Bible on my desk all the time. And I, they would say, I want a God answer to my situation. I thought it was so cool because every time it was the same thing. I said, well, the military says this, this, and this. And God says, love and forgive, respect, amen? Yeah, this is amazing uh, what uh, God will do. I know whom I believe in. Jesus is not just a, a figure of, of uh, authority over us. Jesus is our brother and our friend. Amen? Amen. I know who he is. And I'm persuaded in whom I believe. Because I want my life to be like his. 
And why do I want that? Why? We've got to know that answer, right? Why do I want my life to be like Him? Because I want the lost and dying world to know Him also. And our responsibility, our ministry, like I said in the beginning, is that. That those that don't know Him would know Him through our ministry. I know whom I believe. Now think about Paul for a minute again. Sitting in that jail cell. Right? Got his, his parchment. Read it. Getting his coat. Bring with, bring with me my coat. Don't forget my parchment. I want to write. I thank God Paul brought all this stuff down. And he pens to Timothy. I want you to remember this. Here, give me that one more time. Look at, look at the scripture with me in your Bibles. It's a very, very important thing. You can research it when you get home. But look at this, and I want you to reread this again. Allow the Spirit of God to soak into you His Word. The Word, now listen, the Word of God is what? This Word right here is who? Jesus, isn't it? Jesus in the Old Testament, by the law, it, sh it shows that he's hidden in there. But then in the New Testament, by grace, he's revealed to us the grace of God, the love of God. You read John 1, the word of God was in the beginning with God and now is with us. And truth comes through the word of God, through Jesus. There's no other way we can find truth except through Jesus. And Paul, look at verse 8, it says, So do not be ashamed. To testify about our Lord. Boy, there's a sermon in each one of these little, little lines right here. Don't be afraid to let people know who you are. Don't be afraid, Christians. This is a mature Christian now. We're going from being just a, a, a new Christian, and now we're maturing in Christ. We need to let people know who we are. Don't hide our faith any longer, amen? Or be ashamed of me, his prisoner. Or be ashamed of anybody that's a believer. Amen? But join with me in suffering for the gospel. Now, boy, preach a sermon on that for a, for a couple hours. Join with me in the suffering for the gospel. Why was Paul in prison? The only reason he was in prison because he preached about Jesus. The religious folks didn't like it. The, 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 the government didn't like it. But Jesus was the answer for everyone. Salvation. <coughs> By the power of God who saves us and calls us to a holy life. What is a holy life? We talked about that a few weeks ago. What is a holy life? A separated life for God. A holy life. And Tina's going to be teaching this next week about sanctification. A holy life separated for God's purpose. Oh, I'm a, I do this or I do this as an occupation. Can you do it for the glory of God? Everybody say yes. Yes. Why do you work where you work? And why do you do the things? Randy, why do you travel all over the place? To, for, for your family. Money. You know what? I'm going to tell you, Randy, you do it for a better reason than that. Sure, you need income for your family. But, you know, you meet more people than I do because you go, you travel. You're in the airport. You're at these different locations. They need to know who you are in Christ. Because somebody there needs to hear that Jesus Christ is the answer to their situation problem. Seriously. Why do you do what you do? Why do you have the education and knowledge you have? God's going to use that for your, His glory. So people can know who Christ is. That's what I want to do in 2014. I want this church to let people know that Jesus is real. Saturday we have an opportunity to do that. We have people that, uh, all different uh, faiths, all different backgrounds coming to, to a, a traditional Thanksgiving dinner. Great. Why are they here? They have turkey and gravy, which is really good, and pumpkin pie, by the way. <laughs> right? Love that. But they're here to hear about Jesus. And God wants to use each one of us for that purpose. To know people about Jesus. Now let's just go down this a little bit further because this, this gets even a little heavier. Is it not because of anything we have done? Nothing that you've done. You can't even explain it sometimes. But because of his own purpose and grace, this grace was given with uh, us in Christ Jesus before the beginning of time. So God, think about it. His salvation was in the beginning of time. When was that? 
when God spoke into existence the heavens and earth, maybe before that even. I was talking to my sister last night, and uh, we have my nephew struggling in relationships and stuff, and, and you know, she's trying to be the mom. I said, well, you can't help him by being the mom. You did that when he was a little boy, you know? You raised him up and all that stuff. Now it's time for Jesus. You gotta tell him, don't be ashamed of your belief. She's a Christian, my sister. I said, don't be ashamed of your belief. That's what he needs. He needs life spoken to those situations. He doesn't need your mommy. Amen? He needs the help that Jesus offered from the beginning of time. But as, but it has now been revealed through the appearing of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who has destroyed death. Now think about this, Christians. Destroyed death. Now I'm thinking about those guys in Iran right now that are going to the prison camps. We have pastors and we have believers in, that are being uh, killed by the hundreds of thousands. Churches being burned. Pastors and their wives being uh, killed <coughs> or raped in front of their family. All that's going on right now in uh, Indonesia, across the world. We don't have that here. Thank God we don't have it here. But that's happening. I'm thinking, you know, if, if you were in that situation, would you fear death? Most of us will. I mean, come on, we're thinking, well, what if I die here? But as soon as the Bible reassures, Jesus reassures, as soon as you take your last breath, you're in his presence. There's no fear of death. I haven't experienced that maybe a little bit in California when we were a little, you know, some neighborhoods we weren't supposed to be in, you know, kind of thing. The pastor's daughter got killed that weekend before we got there in that, neighbor, in that uh, parking lot. Um, you know, we were there sharing Jesus with the people that needed it. So I guess in my flesh I was a little scared. My kids were there. My wife was there. You know, so the church uh, group that was helping me. You know, I was like, okay, God, this, this, we're here for your glory. And I had people show guns to us, and I had, you know, uh, Anyway, it was a little scary. But my thought was if I died here, I died because I love the people that are in this neighborhood. If my family died here, they would that'd be for the same glory. So pray for their persecuted church. We don't have to experience that on a daily basis, but there's Christians all over the world right now that are being persecuted unto death just because they believe in Jesus Christ. And the same reason that Paul was in prison. So Pastor, this is a very encouraging sermon this morning. You know what? The church has to begin to stand up and realize the answer for the, the the broken world is Jesus. Hallelujah. And I hope you encourage to stand up this week in, in your workplace or wherever you're at and just maybe make, take a stand. No, I believe in Jesus. There was a lady, Janet, the, the lady we prayed for. Uh, she's in the hospital. Janet uh, Hawkins, her husband, Alan, is a pastor in Mississippi. We've been helping them uh, this last week. She had a uh, Double lungs. Remember, we prayed for her, and uh, they had one lung was had a little more uh, surgery to it, but the other lung was had very minimal. Uh, so they had to take out. So it was kind of cool. We gave God glory for that. You know, I don't know. God could have healed that. I mean, I don't know how bad. I don't know her records. I don't know how bad she was before. But we just rejoiced with them. And Janet was told that she had to take all her Christian stuff off her office because it was offending people. Right? And she lost her job. Because the only reason she lost her job is because she's a Christian. Could that happen to you? What would you do? Well, I'm kind of a Christian. I'm, I'm just not, you know, only on Sunday. You know. No. I know who I believe in. I'm not going to bow down to any other needs. Amen? And God said in Matthew that he would provide all that you need, so we're going to trust him for that too, right? Amen. Come on. Yeah. We have to believe the whole counsel of God, that he's going to do that for you. 
Amen. If you're going to stand up and make a righteous stand for his kingdom, then he's going to provide all those other things that we need. Amen. Where was I at? Verse 10. It says, um, but it um, has now been revealed through the appearing of our Lord, our Savior, Jesus Christ, whom has uh, destroyed death and has brought life and immorality to light. Morality to light through the gospel. And of this gospel, listen, this, and of this gospel, which is Jesus, right? Yes. Nothing else. I was appointed a herald and an apostle and a teacher. That's Paul talking about himself. This is why I'm suffering as I am, because he preached the gospel. So when I was in the military, you know, this was uh, 98 when I got out, I was um, asked to be, I was like a chaplain to my unit. So I was asked to do uh, ceremonies when they had graduations. They had asked that they want a chaplain to come in and pray in the beginning. They want a chaplain to pray at the end. Invocation and benediction, right? So they, we didn't have a chaplain, and they knew I was those crazy Christian guys, so they asked me to do it, right? And so one of the things they asked me to do was not to pray in Jesus' name. And I said, well, find somebody else then. We have nobody else. I said, well, if you ask me to pray, I'm praying. This is how I pray. If you don't like it, then have somebody else do it. I was a stand. No, we need you. And all, and all the other guys liked me. You know, all the troops, because I, I was really friendly. I loved on them. I cared for them. I prayed for them. I was there for the different needs. So they, I mean, the troops and all the people that were below me, they loved me. But the, the leadership had trouble with that. But I said, hey. And I was part of the leadership, so this is who I am. And so they would ask me to pray. And they would come to me. Would you pray for our graduation? Yes, no problem. And when they'd say something like that, I'd say, no, I can't do that then. And, but every time, I'd pray for them. And I'd ask God, I wouldn't do it like a pat, right out of a prayer. I wouldn't do it. I'd ask the Holy Spirit, this group of men that are going to graduate, and some of them were deploying in harm's way, so it depends on what the situation is. I'd ask God, give me a specific prayer for these guys. And that's the prayer I'd pray as a benediction. Oh, I love it because the presence of God would fill that little room up with 20 or 30 of those guys graduating. And they just didn't know. And they, I would say amen, and they would freeze. They didn't know what to do. They were in the presence of God. It was, it was awesome. Why? Because they would pray it in the name of Jesus. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid of Jesus. Cultivate your relationship with him. Paul writes this in, in the next part. He says, I know whom I believe. If you take anything from the sermon today, take that. I know him. I know Jesus. Because in him is life. You know what I like in him? Is peace. I pray that over my children and over my grandchildren now. Over you guys, I pray, God, give them peace. I, there's times I didn't know peace. I was in so much turmoil in my life, and the peace of God would come over me. And I didn't have an answer, but I kind of knew everything was going to be okay. Amen? I didn't, know, I didn't know what the next day would bring, but because of the peace that God gave me at that moment, I knew that he was there and he was going to take care of it. Amen? I know whom I believe in. We as a church must know who we believe in. Now look at the next part. It's just going to finish up with this last part. Just look at the next part of scripture because it's really awesome. When you know whom you believe, everything seems to fall into place, right? This is, and convinced that he is able to guard which I have entrusted to him for that day. In verse 13, it says, What you have heard from me, keep the pattern of sound teaching with faith and love in Christ Jesus. And if you're struggling with that, even, it's, he says, Paul writes, now listen, this is, he's writing to Timothy. This is the last letter he put in a pen. He's going to write this. He says, don't forget this thing. And he says, guard the good deposit which was entrusted in you. Guard with the help. And who's the helper? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. Oh, we need to know that the Spirit has been deposited in us so we can guard the things that Jesus did for us. And it's the Holy Spirit that quickens to our spirit at that moment when we decide should I or shouldn't I do something? 
Should I take a stand here or should I just like wimp out and go move on? Come on, it's, Christianity is not for wimps. Can I say that in church? Is that okay? <laughs> Come on. That's why our strength comes from knowing Him through this Word. Amen. Strength comes with encouraging each other in the faith. That's why he said I gave apostles and prophets and pastors and teachers for the maturing of the saints, for the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry. Why? So we can be strong and do the work that it's called to do. Amen? Amen? God wants to challenge you today. He wants you to know. He wants you to know that he is here for you. And he has deposited in you his spirit to confirm in your hearts the things that were, listen, the only one that brings up your past is the enemy. The only one that tells you you're not good enough to do something is the devil. The only one that brings guilt to you, false guilt to you, is the enemy of God. You're not worthy. You're not educated enough. You can't do that. Look at your life. Look how messed up things are. No, it's the enemy of God. He brings that all up to us all the time. You got to know who you believe in. So when the enemy comes in like a flood, you can hold up a stand and say, No, Jesus has given me the victory over all that stuff. Amen. And even though, come on, even though we look at our past sometimes and say, Look how messed up we are. Right? Even though sometimes we, do, we go through that in our brains. Don't let the enemy let that sit there. Amen? You cast that out and say, I am a child of the Most High God. I am a Christian. I'm a believer. I'm a daughter. I'm a son of the Most High God. Think about that. We are grafted into the vine. We're grafted into the vine. We are now joint heirs with Christ Jesus. Amen? Now, look, if you would, look at um, uh, Luke. Luke, Luke, Luke. Luke 6. 46. I'll end with this. Thank you, Jesus. See, I'm, I'm learning just like you're learning. I'm learning to stand up straight for the kingdom of God. I'm not going to compromise. Amen? I need strength from God just like you need strength from God. Amen? We all need this. Luke 6, it talks about the word, which is who? Jesus, right? It says, the wise and the foolish builder. Remember the story about the one that built his house on the rocks and one that built a house on the sand? Right? This, here's the answer to that story. It says, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I say? Right? Jesus said, why do you call me Lord? Why do you call me Lord or cry out to me when you're not going to do what I say? Right? He says, I, I will show you what he is like who comes to me and hears my word and puts them into practice. He is like a man building a house who digs down deep and lays a foundation on rocks. When a flood comes, or trials and tribulations come in your life, right? Look at, we're putting this in an application. He's using a, 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 a story to tell us the truth, right? The truth is your house or your life should be laid of deep foundation in Christ. When a flood comes, the tor torrent struck the house, but could not shake it because it was well built. Verse 49. But the one who hears my word and does not put them into practice is like a man who builds his house on ground without a foundation. The moment the torrent struck the house, it collapsed and its destruction and its destruction is complete. So what is Jesus in here? I believe in who, like Paul says, I believe in him. I believe in his word. When I hear his word, I want to do what his word tells me to do. Because that shows that I have a foundation in him. But if I just kind of go through this thing as Christianity, as a religious activity, I'm not building, when, when trials and tribulations come, my life is all torn apart. Have you ever met a Christian like that? They're just, everything's falling apart. I'm like, wait a second, don't you know Jesus? That's what I take him back to. I'm a good counselor. I told you I like counseling, right? I can go back to, do you believe that Jesus Christ came in the flesh? Do you believe he was born of a virgin? Did you believe that he died on the cross and suffered? Lay a foundation, a solid foundation, and understand who he is. Yes. My challenge to you this week is to know him. 
Go deeper. Dig down in the ground and make sure the foundation you have is solid. Make sure that the bricks that are down there, the, the basic truths of God's word. Who is Jesus? The Savior of the world. The one that can forgive sins. The blood of Jesus that was actually the blood of the Father. If you studied out a little bit further, that Father God, His blood was flowed through Jesus' veins and was poured on the temple altar that our sins may be forgiven once and for all. The foundation of what we believe. And we believe when he died and suffered on that cross, they pulled him off that tree and they placed him in a tomb. And three days later, he was alive. Yes. The foundations of our truth. And when you go on the book, go on to read 1 Peter and 2 Peter and go into Jude and Revelations, and you read that this same Jesus that suffered and died is coming back for you and me. Amen? Amen. We don't have to fear death because he conquered death on the cross. When we pass from this life into the next life, it'll be a moment of time. And our dead body will be in this realm and we'll be alive in the spirit realm of Christ Jesus. Amen? Hallelujah. We are alive in Christ. That's who I believe in. That's who I believe in. And that same Jesus suffered before he went to the cross. And it says by, in Isaiah 53, by his stripes we are healed. And he said, I'm going to send you a comforter, the Holy Spirit, so you won't be alone and that you can understand everything Pastor Bob said. Yes. Amen? I know who I believe in. And if you're not sure today, I want to make sure you know who Jesus is. Amen? Would you, Tina, play some music? I want to know, if you're not sure today, I want you to know today who this Jesus is. As a believer, and you can say to me, hey, I remember one day I bowed down and I asked Jesus to come into my heart. I remember the day. I remember the time. I remember what was happening in my life. I remember I was full of confusion and doubt and fear. And somebody shared with me about this Jesus. And my life changed. I gave my life to Jesus. Yes. I bowed my heart. Remember those things. God, by His Spirit, calls to remember to remember. As he taught a few weeks ago. He, he brings back to our remembrance those things. So we're encouraged in our faith. But if today you're saying, man, I'm not really sure. Man, I want to get that right today, man. I want you to know. I want this church to know who we believe in. And maybe my last will and testament, I'll write to my children, know who you believe. Know him, know Jesus. Don't know anything else. The world system is not important. Religious systems are not important. They will all fail you. But know him, know Jesus. Because when you know him, oh, there's a peace that surpasses all understanding. There's a freedom in God that says no matter what comes at me, I'm not going to worry about it because I know Him. Yes. What's so beautiful about that is Father God, through His Son, is telling you today He loves you. Amen. And He wants to forgive you. And He wants to set you free from any bondage that you do with. Know him. To know whom I believe. I know him, Jesus. Let's everybody just bow your heads right now. I don't want anybody to be embarrassed. I just want to do that out of respect for one another this morning. Say, Pastor Bob, I, I know. Hey, I'm just struggling with my relationship with Jesus. I want to be in a better place. If that's you this morning, would you just raise your hand and put it right back down? Don't be embarrassed. Just put it up and put it right back down. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Hallelujah. And maybe you're here today and you've never received Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You never asked Him to be Lord of your life. But you want to know Him. Would you just raise your hand and put it right back down? Anyone else? Thank you, Jesus. Right where you are, let's pray to God there.
Father, you see the hands that are raised. Father, you see the hearts that are eager to know you. So, Father, right where you're at, I just pray peace over everyone here today. Not feel guilty about what was said, but God, be encouraged that there's a deeper relationship with you that can be obtained, Lord God. I thank you for that. Forgive us, Lord, where we err. I pray grace over those situations, Father God, that cause us to be, uh, that cause us to stumble. And Father, I pray for this congregation today for boldness to stand up for truth, to stand up for Jesus, where we know who we believe in. It is Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Bless, bless your servants today, Lord. Strengthen them, encourage you by your spirits. And Father, I thank you for each one. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Now, if you would just bear with me, I want.